Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello dear friends, may God bless all of you. And I say this prayer with all of my heart and God knows that. This prayer is so that those who who say Bishop pray for me uh, help me. So I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You who are thirsty and hungry for righteousness, be blessed, be fulfilled, satisfied in Jesus' name, because this is God's will for you, for me, for all of us. God wants the best for each of us, the best. He promises in His Word. He said, He spoke, He promised, Oh, if my people would listen to me. Oh, if my people would listen to me, I would feed them with the best of this land. The best. We only have to listen to Him and obey, of course. But how can I obey, Bishop? How can I please God how can I honor God in my current situation? I'm living, you know, depending on people to have a roof over my head. I'm desperate. I'm lost. I'm fallen. I'm like the rubbish of this world. I lost my father. I lost my mother. My husband left me. My wife abandoned me. My children don't want to have anything to do with me anymore. I'm suffering, 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 and suffering. Yes, God knows that. He knows about all your situation. But still, even though you don't have the Holy Spirit yet, you are not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit, even if you haven't been yet honored, with the baptism with the Holy Spirit, you can change your life right now, in this moment. Right now. Yes. Right now. Do you know how God works, dear friends? Let me tell you. Especially you who are with your life upside down. Pay attention. He changes your life straight away when our mind, our intelligence, our intellect, our reasoning starts to think as He does. When you think as God thinks, or better, let me be clearer, when you agree with what He thinks and you start to practice and this you can decide here, in your head. It's here, in your head. You don't need to be deserving of anything in order to be blessed by God, in order to honor God. You don't have to be full of the Holy Spirit in order to honor God. You can honor God the way that you are. This is the least. And He will honor you there in heaven. It's what Jesus promises. And we spoke about this yesterday. I will honor those who honor me. Those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. So how can you change your life right now, immediately? Pay attention. Look at the experience. I will speak of a man who had extraordinary and magnificent experiences with God. Even though he failed God, even though he fell into temptation, even though he failed in his personal life, in his love life, with his family, in his businesses, even still he found grace before God. So it's a man who had experiences and Used by the Holy Spirit, he left these words that you are going to read and understand. Pay attention. 
He says like this, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb, lettuce, onions, kale, they will dry up. They will dry up. So if you want to please God, you can do that from now on. How? Instead of you criticize and observe and judge the person who is in front of you or who is next to you or the person that you saw on TV, on the news, on the internet, and all these means, instead of you looking at others and at what others do wrong, and it seems, it looks as though they are thriving, and you look, oh, come on, how is it possible? Here in your mind you think, oh, it's not possible, look at that. That person is wicked. That person does everything that is bad. They steal. They are corrupt. But they are succeeding. Look at them. Come on, this is terrible. I mean, you are doing what is evil in the eyes of God. Because you are observing others. You are not looking at yourself. You have to look at yourself. Aren't you the one who needs God? Aren't you the one who needs to please Him so that He can please you? Isn't it you that have to honor the Lord Jesus so that Jesus can honor you? I cannot honor the Lord Jesus and you be honored by Him because of me. No, it's each man for themselves, dear friends. So you have to honor God for yourself and I have to honor God for myself. Each person has the obligation to honor God for themselves. But when we keep an eye on other people's life and criticizing and judging and thinking ill concerning what they are doing, what they do wrong, and apparently they even receive what is good by doing bad, look at how you are failing. Look at how we fail when we have such behavior. Because God is seeing you. God is seeing me. God is watching us 24 hours a day. So King David, used by the Holy Spirit in those moments of, of glory that he had when he had a relationship with God, he wrote by the Spirit, Do not fret because of evildoers, just because they do evil and they succeed. Don't be angry, don't be envious of them. Don't be envious of those who do what is wrong. Don't. I've seen many times, many people in my life, I'm 79 now, I've seen many people apparently succeeding whilst they were doing what was wrong. I would see that. And I would find those things wrong. But I learned that I cannot look at other people's belly bottom. I have to look at my own. I have to look at my life. Because it's my life that's at stake. It's my soul. It's my salvation. So I have to look after myself first. So that afterwards, I can try to help others. That's the reality. So the Holy Spirit says, do not do not fret. Do not be angry because of those people that you know, loved ones, family members who are succeeding. They are breaking through, in other words. But they are evildoers. They are doing what's evil. They know that they are doing wrong. You know they are doing wrong, but they keep doing it because they are succeeding. 
And they even think you are silly, you are a fool. Oh, there goes the fool, the silly. Look, I'm enjoying life and they are there, you know, crying, groaning, suffering and so on. God says, do not fret, do not be angry, don't be upset, don't be envious of those who work iniquity because they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb and wither as lettuce, kale, cabbage and everything else that is a herb and will wither sooner or later because God's justice may delay in our point of view but it will never ever fail so you have to think you have to think you have to reason concerning your life your life don't be looking at anybody else look at yourself only at yourself and this is not being selfish this is not being self-centered. This is being intelligent. You are going to look after yourself, your heart. If you are wounded, you are hurt, you are living, you know, your life is upside down. You are at the bottom of the pit. So you are the one who needs salvation. You need help. So don't look at others because those who are doing wrong and apparently succeeding, they are not going to help you. Don't expect them to help you. No one will help you, but you have to help yourself when we start thinking according to the will of God. Because when you simply ignore the person that is next to you or in front of you who is succeeding even though they are doing what's wrong, instead of you criticizing, judging, or having malice towards that person, you have to look at yourself. Oh my God, and God is seeing you. Did you know? God sees you. I usually say to my colleagues, look, God observes us even more when we are alone than when we are accompanied by people or even in the church. Of course, he sees us at all times, but I think that he observes me more when I'm alone. What do I do when I'm alone? What do I think? What am I planning? What are you planning when you are alone by yourself? What do you think when you are alone? Instead of you know, these moments that you are alone, instead of talking to God, oh my God, help me, have mercy on me, you are looking at yourself, you are taking care of yourself. Lord, what do I need to do to please you? Because if I please you, it's written here, if I please you, you will give, you grant me the desires of my heart. It's what David says. He says, the unrighteous, the wicked, those who think they are important, they think they are thriving, they shall be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb, like lettuce, like vegetables. They will wither. And then he says, trust in the Lord and do good. Do you want to please God? Trust in Him. Trust in the God that you don't see, feel or touch, but you know He exists. You believe He exists. Then do good, especially in times when you are alone. You are alone because God is seeing you. He doesn't just observe us when we are praying. No, at all times when we are alone, He is observing us. What are our actions? Because when we are alone, no one is looking at us, then that's the perfect time to do what is wrong, far from everybody, for no one to see and know. 
But he knows, he sees. That's when he sees, more than ever. So, dear friends, change your mindset. Firstly, don't look at evildoers. Don't look at the corrupt ones that are thriving, that are ostentating luxury cars and yachts and airplanes, and they have a very messy life, but they are showing to the whole world how they are thriving. They will wither. I don't know if you've seen, but in slow motion, we can see some footages of a plant withering or a flower withering. It starts dying out and dying out, and you can clearly see and this is what happens to evildoers. This is what happens to people who are observing others. And instead of looking after themselves in relation to God, they are looking at others and feeling envious, which is even worse. Excuse me. Let me just drink some water. My throat needs it. So, instead of looking at others, look at yourself. And a man experienced in suffering and pain and victories as well as defeat, David, with a heart after God's own heart, he was used by God to say this text, led by the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord instead of asking, Oh my God, I can't believe that you exist. Because if you do, indeed, then why you see that guy stealing, doing everything that is wrong and he's succeeding? How come? How is it possible? <laughs> Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and don't criticize anyone. Don't think this or think that. No. Trust in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. This is to please God. When you trust in the Lord, you do good. When you don't believe, you do evil. When a person believes in God, they do what's good. Even though they are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, but of course, if they continue in this faith, in this behavior of doing good, then the Lord Jesus himself comes to baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord. Trust. He is above all things. He is unchangeable. He never changes. He is who he was. And he'll always be the same. He doesn't change. So trust in him. Trust. Wait in him. Hope in him. I know that you are going through difficult moments, hard moments, but trust in what he said, in what he promised. Trust in his word. To trust in His Word is to trust in Him. To trust in His Word is to love Him. To trust in His Word is to please Him. When you do that, you are taking the right sort of action, that are righteous. And God, obviously, will honor you according to your ability to receive the honor that comes from him. Because he doesn't give all the honor at once. No, he will honor little by little according to your maturity, according to your surrender, according to your submission to him, according to your generous good heart. So trust in the Lord when a person trusts, they do good. When they don't trust, they do evil.
trust in the Lord and do good. Then he says here, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Be pleased with the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Ah, dear friends, I am the type of person, let me tell you something, sincerely, I am the type of person that is imperfect, like we all are. However, there is one thing that I've been practicing and obeying. I don't look at others. I don't look at what others are doing, whether right or wrong. I look and care after my own life. Oh God, when I'm alone, I speak to God. I have freedom, liberty to talk to God. I have intimacy with Him. Why? Because I'm alone. I'm free. I don't feel shy if there's someone next to me and I'm talking to God. How I'd like to speak. No, when I'm alone, I speak to Him freely. So, another thing that I've always done in my life, I do not observe the bad examples. I don't look at those that did evil and apparently are thriving, succeeding, whilst I'm doing good, and apparently, Bishop, I, I'm suffering, even though I do good. I take care of myself. I'm sure. And this is the intelligent faith. When we have an intelligent faith, a faith that thinks, I know, even in difficult times, in times of persecution, in times of hatred that we face from other people, in the moments of injustices, I know, I know, I'm fully assured that my Lord takes care of me. I trust in His Word. It's not in myself. I don't trust myself. I trust His Word. I know that He exists and He's seen that, that difficult situation that I go through, and then I wait in Him. Oh Lord, I know that one day You will do what needs to be done. You are going to meet my needs. You are going to answer me, and so on. You will change the situation. Because not even a little leaf falls from a tree if it's not God's will. Therefore, dear friends, let me sincerely tell you this. Look within yourself and start to change your mindset straight away. Because once your mindset changes, then your life starts to change. Your life starts to change from the moment that you change your mindset. That's it. So may God bless you and open your understanding. May He allow you to see what you need to see and be blind before the things that you are seeing that you shouldn't see. That's the reality. This fast of Daniel is wonderful, isn't it? It's so good. I was even talking to another pastor about this. Come on, this is so nice. Because we are so out of what is happening in the world. We are so... We ignore everything that is happening around us. I don't know how the war is going. I don't know anything, anything. I'm completely blind to this world. But attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
with attentive ears to hear the voice of God. This does me so well. And you who are doing the fast of Daniel, I'm sure even if you haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit yet, I'm sure that you've been feeling at peace. Yes or no? Tell me the truth. Do you know why? Because you are not drinking from the dirt of this world. You are not drinking from the lies of this world. When you or when we go online to seek information about the war, we want to know what's happening there. Yesterday, I heard a very strong phrase. I really liked it. It says that when the war starts, the first victim, the first thing that dies is the truth. And it's true. When a war starts, the first one to die is the truth. It's like in politics, isn't it? In that war to be elected, people bend over backwards and the first victim of, of the war is the truth. And when we do the fast of Daniel, we are free from lies and deceit and the illusions. We are focused on what God said and He says to you, to all of us, do not fret because of evildoers. Don't be upset because the evildoers are succeeding even though they are doing evil. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. I remember, I remember a person, a special person, a family member of mine. And this family member was always ostentating and saying things to the family. Oh, last night I went out with such and such a woman and this week this happened. He was always bragging about what he did. He was a good-looking guy who would always attract a lot of women. In a way, he would see himself as a king, as a king. But poor him. He lost his life prematurely. He withered and died. Poor him. And now? So, imagine if I would be envious of him. I would go down the same path. I would have gone the same path. But he says here, Do not fret because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. He who trusts in God does good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, meaning be pleased in the Lord. Please God and He will reward you with what? He shall give you the desires of your heart, according to His will, of course. May God bless you all. And see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, as it's Sunday, go to church. Go to a church, your own church, your denomination. Go thirsty to receive the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, I don't accept this life that I've been living. I, I look at myself in the mirror and I don't like what I see. Help me. Give me your Holy Spirit. So go thirsty. And the pastors at the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God have been instructed to bring to you the word that will awaken your faith for your total surrender on the altar, God's altar. Okay? May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.